there are more and more bed bugs in our lives. These bed bugs are tiny little creatures that are ruining our lives, aren't they, Florence? Yes, we do. Unfortunately, yes. Florence, who is a dermatologist at Palms College, we're going to talk to you about these bed bugs. Maybe you've suffered from them over the summer, or maybe they're just around the corner because sometimes they don't show up until after you're back from vacation. So we're going to give you a few explanations where these bed bugs come from, what you can do to prevent them, and Florence has a trick she's implemented at home. You'll see, it's quite special, and it seems to be extremely effective. So, these bed bugs are little creatures. Can you tell? How big are they? So, in fact, they're small insects that suck the blood of humans to survive, and they vary in size. Eggs are a millimeter long, so they're hard to see, and what's more, they're translucent, so they're hard to see, and in fact, they follow a cycle, becoming larvae, etc., until they reach the adult bug. And that's four or five millimeters, and it's rather brown in color, so it's a little easier to detect than the very early stages. In any case, it can be seen with the naked eye. Here you can see the cycle of the bed bug from egg to adult stage. First of all, when you enter an apartment you've rented, for example, you look to see if there example, are any of these little creatures. That's exactly the point, because what you need to know is that between 2017 and 2021, there's a recent report showing that 10% of French households have been infected by bed bugs. So it's a very common problem and not at all related to hygiene. And it's due to a number of factors, but the main ones are, as you said, Boris, the increasingly frequent use of temporary furnished accommodation and all kinds of seasonal rentals. And so, uh, at the same time, we go to these seasonal rentals, and then sometimes to pay for these seasonal rentals, we put our own apartments up for rent. And that really creates traffic, in the sense that instead of one person or one family occupying an apartment, there's a lot of coming and going, and that makes it easier for bedbugs to get in. So when you arrive in an apartment or even a hotel, it's the same thing. You look at the seams of the mattress. Because bed bugs like places where they can hide away from the light, so mattress seams are a good place for them to hide. More generally, we look in cupboards and drawers. In short, you try to detect bed bugs yourself with the naked eye. The problem with bed bugs is that once they've attacked us, they can itch, itch like hell. So how do you tell the difference between, because during the summer, there are mosquitoes and other bugs, not just bed bugs. How do you tell the difference between mosquito bites and bed bug bites? So it's difficult and we as dermatologists sometimes don't know how to answer. In fact, it's a fairly frequent reason for consulting a dermatologist. People sometimes come to us at the end of their tether because they've been scratching for weeks and they've got pimples or red lesions. And it's often linear in nature, i.e. we call it breakfast, lunch and dinner. In other words, they bite at least three times, three to five times. And that, for us, really reminds us of bed bugs. So, as a dermatologist, we see that and we reassure the patient that bed bugs really are a psychological terror nonetheless. It itches, it's terribly itchy and hard to get rid of, but it's not vectorial, which means it doesn't transmit other diseases. Nothing to do with ticks, for example, exactly, which that's can it. transmit In Lyme other words, disease. bed bugs don't transmit diseases, so you scratch a lot, it's a cutaneous reaction to bed bug saliva, but you don't catch it, at least to date, there's been no demonstration of transmission. And is it possible to get infected within the family? If a parent or child has been infected, can he or she contaminate close relatives through contact? In other words, he's not really going to contaminate you by hugging you or anything like that. It's possible, for example, that he'll bring back little bed bugs in his luggage or on his clothes. It's rarer, but it's possible, which will fall into your apartment before you know it. And then they start to proliferate. But it's not like scabies, in the sense that they don't stick to your skin. They come and bite you at night when you're asleep around 3, 4 or 5 in the morning. And then it goes back to hiding in bed. So you can be attacked by these bed bugs if you go into an infested dwelling. But you can also be contaminated if you've brought bed bugs home. And sometimes you don't realize it right away. No, it's not right away. So, as you say, it takes time for them to proliferate. And then, at the beginning, they sting and rest for 12 days before stinging again. So, sometimes there's only one person in the household who gets bitten who sometimes looks a bit like a madman, but who still gets pimples. And gradually, the more infested the home, the more other people in the home will show the same symptoms. This means that if you were on vacation in August, you may not feel the symptoms until September or even October. 
and that's it. Then, in general, yes, we'll notice it in September, the first stings will appear, and it may remind you, you'll say to yourself, but it's strange, I already had the same stings when I went on vacation. That's really something to be wary of. Do a thorough examination of the apartment, the room, even call in experts to determine whether or not there's an infestation. In a moment, we'll give you your prevention tip when you suspect you've been infested by bed bugs. Before we go any further, it's important to remember that bed bugs aren't just a problem where you sleep. We've heard about them in the news, even in the movies. In the cinema, because bed bugs actually love the dark. So in the cinema, they're delighted, they love the dark, they love seats, sofas, in short, any place where they can get close to humans. So what could be better than a cinema? But the problem is, when you go to the cinema, you don't start by inspecting your chair. What can you do at the cinema to avoid getting infected? So I don't have the answer to that question at all. I mean, how far do you go? Do you have to put an interface between yourself and the seat? But the important thing to remember is that, yes, they can be, and not just in cinemas, but in all slightly obscure places with furniture. In fact, if you're bringing home furniture you've bought secondhand, you need to inspect it carefully. Those are the vectors. And for the cinema, let's say it's up to the cinema to take responsibility for decontaminating exactly, the seats exactly. regularly. I think that's what some cinemas wouldn't have done, and that's why it's such a scandal. You have to be careful. So, we're going to give a few tips on how to avoid being infested by bed bugs at home if you've just come back from vacation. And Florence, you've got some advice. You've taught me something, and I think it's going to change my life and the lives of everyone watching us. So it's true that we mustn't fall into psychosis. Nevertheless, I do a lot of secondhand stuff, and it's well known that secondhand is a major vector of bed bugs. So long live secondhand, because it's good for the wallet, good for the planet. So I'm not going to stop secondhand, despite the bed bug problem. What I do, however, is that the first thing I do is, before I even unpack the package, I put it in the freezer. That's three days, 72 hours, at minus 20 degrees. So I'll cut you off just to make it clear. Every time you get a package, so, something yeah. you bought, exactly. you no. put what you bought for three days in your freezer. Yes, but, but if exactly. it's an appliance, if it's a cell phone, for example, it can't go in the freezer. So, yes, I should have specified it's anything uh, textile. Oh, right, ah, right, right, yes. Right, right. Clothes, yes, yes, fabrics, exactly, that's that. clothes, fabrics, all that. So anything that can go into the freezer goes into the freezer. Anything that can be washed at over 60 degrees, well, that's 60 degrees minimum, because below that, bed bugs are ultra-resistant, so at 40 degrees they resist. So it's either a wash... It's either very cold or very hot. It's either very, very cold hot. or very hot, or the tumble dryer to help, but you have to reach a temperature of 60 degrees. Ah, the tumble dryer, it, that's yeah. another option if you have one. 60 degrees for 30 minutes. But if you're already infested, there's no other solution but to call in the specialists. Tell us what to do for our health. We really need effective solutions. Yes, you need to call in specialists, real specialists. Because the problem is that these bed bugs have developed resistance to insecticides and these insecticides are also toxic to health, so you really can't do just anything. We're increasingly advocating what we call physical treatments, i.e. either very cold treatments, as I was saying, which in this case means liquid nitrogen, which is very, very cold, or very hot treatments, i.e. heat guns, which are fired into the rooms to raise the temperature and kill all the bed bugs because you can't kill them individually. So the message is, if you've got bed bugs, you're going to lose time and money, and it may be toxic for you, so if you buy a can like that in a store and spray it everywhere, it's not the right solution. Well, no DIY exactly. with bed bugs. And if it itches, there are treatments, I suppose. We've said it's not serious, it can't trigger any illnesses, but it's annoying. So what can we do to avoid scratching ourselves? Because if we do scratch, on the other hand, we can create lesions and super infections. As with any scratching lesion, it can become super infected, so bacteria can enter. So we recommend cleaning uh, with soap and water and taking it easy. As you say, there are exceptional cases of major reactions, but most of the time it's very painful, but it doesn't jeopardize your health at all, at least not your physical health and sometimes your psychological health, because once again, bed bugs take a long time to get rid of. If there are several infested apartments in the same building, you need to be able to talk about it as a co-pro and get everyone to treat their apartments. Otherwise, you'll have permanent recurrences. So it's a problem to deal with mentally, but physically, it's not dangerous. In a word, are there any creams? I don't prescribe creams. 
What about antihistamines, which are sometimes given when it itches? Quite frankly, I don't it think doesn't it works. Work. Well, I hope we've reassured you that it's not serious, but it's true that it's unpleasant. I know that some of you are scratching their itches, feeling that they've been affected. It's normal, I assure you. When we talk about pruritus, it triggers you, things in the head. Yes, but we didn't say even you were you, Boris. But yeah, frankly, before we even started this video, it itched. That itched. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Florence. Thanks to you. And don't forget to subscribe to Palms.